Hey, what is up folks? Thank you all for tuning in. In today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and go over 50 cool must know tips and tricks features that you should know about your iPad. Now this is gonna be the stuff that Apple doesn't really advertise as much. Like it's kind of hidden in the settings and some of the stuff is just stuff that I will personally recommend to help you be more efficient in productivity. So if you just recently picked up an iPad or upgrading from an older generation model, here are all the things that you should know to help you get the most out of your iPad. Let's get started. This first one I wanna quickly go ahead and show you is make your notifications private on the lock screen. By default, this is disabled, so anybody could easily see your messages on the screen. But if we go to our settings, in a notification tab, here, click on show previews, and select when unlocked. Now, whenever our device is locked, our notifications are no longer readable until it's unlocked. Want a more faster way to unlock your device? You can make the iPad unlock immediately as soon as the fingerprint is detected. No longer needing to actually press down. It was just unlocked right away. To set this up, go into your settings, go in general, accessibility, scroll down to home button, and enable rest finger to open. And that's it. While we're here, also take the time to add more fingers for a more quicker and accurate unlock. Or you could add other fingers from other users who could also access your device if you're somebody who shares your iPad. You just need to click on Touch ID and Passcode section, enter your passcode, and just quickly register a new fingerprint. The max you can add is up to five. Now back at the lock screen, if your iPad supports the Apple Pencil, you can actually tap on the lock screen like so, and it will quickly take you to an empty notepad. Here you can quickly take some notes on the go and save it for later. And just in case you have this disabled and you wish to enable this, quickly go into your settings, go in notes, Scroll down to access notes from lock screen and in here are all your settings. I leave mine on create a new note each and every time. Now something that was new for this iOS, iOS 12, is now you can actually use the search bar to search up handwritten text you use with your Apple Pencil. So if you took some notes in class, this is a quick and easy way to go ahead and find them. Scanning documents was something that we should all be aware of by now, but you could also include a handwritten signature. Once you've taken the document and corrected the corners, if you use the Apple Pencil, tap on the document and the iPad will allow you to write on it. And then quickly tap done and it will automatically save. And then just to make sure everybody's all caught up, the cursor can be activated in a few different ways. One way you can actually hold anywhere in the text, this will bring up the magnify glass, or you can also use the Apple Pencil and tap anywhere for the cursor to move. You can also use the two fingers, place them on the screen, it will automatically move the cursor this way, or you can also hold the space bar until it turns the entire screen into a cursor. Now this keyboard is different from other iOS Apple devices. Instead of switching to the number keypad, where the symbols and the numbers are grayed out underneath the letter, you could hit that key and move it like so, and it will quickly enter the number or symbol. And this also works with the Apple Pencil. If you do a lot of hand operations, try unlocking the keyboard, or you could even split the keyboard for two hand use. Just hold down the little key button, and you can see the dock or split option. And to merge it back, you simply just hold it and then merge back and dock. Gestures still exist like the new non-home button iPhones. If you swipe from the bottom, you'll go home, if you swipe from bottom and hold it midway, it'll activate the app switcher. Then if you're using all fingers, you can actually swipe from the previously open app, or you can simply do the singer finger swipe as well. Taking a simple screenshot also has multiple functions too. Once you take a screenshot and hit the little preview button, you're actually able to highlight stuff, add notes with or without the Apple Pencil. You can add text by hitting the little plus icon on the bottom or a signature. Then tap done and it will save all the writing. You can also press and hold the screenshot if you want to quickly send it to a message, a text message, text message, airdrop, all the other options are right here. And then if you would to slowly slide up from the bottom and then if you click and drag and, and drop an app right on the screen, this will launch a mobile version of the application. But if you slide the top gray part tab, it will allow you to extend it and you can move it around to the preferred screen size you like. And then if you close the app and go on to another one but activate App Switcher, the layout will actually save. If you wish to change the app with another app, you can simply just click and drag it just like so. And yes, you can also add a third app if you wish to. And this one would just be the mobile size. Just simply click and drag it on the little black bar and that's it. 
And if you're watching a video, movie, or maybe you're following some kind of video tutorial, you can actually hit the home button and it will minimize it and continue to play. So you'll have a total up to four windows. If you wish to move it, you could do so. And if you wish to close it, just simply hit the little X marker. And then slide left or right to close all the other background apps. And then when on Safari, when browsing YouTube or other websites, you can actually request for a desktop version by simply holding the refresh icon and select desktop. And then if you have two tabs open, but you want to have them both side by side, you could do so by simply holding down the tab icon right here and select split view. Now you have two of these websites open side by side and one can be desktop mode or mobile version. Either or, they work flawlessly. And you can also add more tabs on each side of those windows. And to exit, just simply close all those tabs and that's it. And then if you're ever in those situations where you find yourself on the very bottom of a really long website, you can simply tap on top of the Safari and this will automatically make you go all the way on top of the web browser. And then instead of tapping back, 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 you can simply go back to a previously opened website by simply holding down the back key and then you'll see the list that you recently visited. Tap the site and you're back. This is perfect for those weird ads that pop up that like lock you in place. If you do this route, you can skip all that BS and go back to the website. And then if you're returning back to Safari and you have multiple different websites open up in the background, you can actually use the search bar up here and enter a subject that you remember that you found on that site that you're looking for. And then when it comes to closing these apps, instead of clicking X one by one, if you go back to here and hold right here on the little tab icon, you can actually select all to close all. And when searching on the search bar, you actually have arrow suggestions, exactly like you would see on Google, for example, that will automatically fill whatever you're looking for. Just tap the little arrow, it'll fill up that text, and you continue doing so until you find the right thing you're looking for. And then when it comes to viewing or listening to audio on Safari, you can actually hold the 15 second skip period for a one second skip instead. The drag and drop functionality isn't really fully marketed by Apple on how to do so, it's a really great tool and it works like this. If you have two apps open up like so, let's say you click on your photos and you want to drag this photo to your notes. You can simply drag and drop it on the notes. You could do this on websites. You could actually do this with text and you can also click and drag locations and you can actually use the home button to navigate across all the applications you want to go to. This also works with emails and other supportive document apps. Now, if you have the iPad mini, increasing the text size is something you may want to go ahead and check out. If you want to go ahead and do so, simply go into your settings, general, accessibilities, tap on large text, and here you have full control of the size of all the text on the screen. So go ahead and test this out, but there's also a way you could actually add this on your control center for a more quicker access to this setting. So let's quickly go back to our settings, hit the control center, customize, and add this little text size icon. Here you can find other stuff that supports the control center. So let's quickly add the record as well. And you can also rearrange them however you like. Now when you slide down, you'll see the new icons we added. Tap on the size icon and here you can control it all right here on the go without needing to go back in the settings. So you can turn this on and off if you like. Now as for the record button, this will not only record everything on the display, but if you also go back and hold it for a few seconds, you now have the option to include the microphone to record as well. So if you wish to add voice to your screen recording, this is how you do so. Then if you haven't already, customizing your widgets is a great way to get all your information on one side of the screen. To do this, simply just tap edit and add the information you wish to see like weather and other stuff or other third party apps that support it. On iMessage, if you actually enter the text I am at, you can actually automatically tap right here to send your location. And if you wish to increase the sound of your iPad, you can actually do so by changing the EQ. If you go back to your settings, tap on music, EQ, and select late night. This is the maximum audio that will actually boost up your speaker's quality, so your speakers are going to get louder. Want to connect to an existing Bluetooth device, but your headphones or speakers aren't automatically connected. A way you could actually manually overwrite these is by bringing down the media control right here. Tap on this little tab and select the airdrop icon right here and quickly select the Bluetooth device you have. And now it will manually overwrite it and connect it right away. Want to be called something other than your name? You could actually request Siri to call you Batman, for example. 
and just simply hit confirm. She can call you anything you like. So if Siri has a hard time pronouncing your name correctly, you can also let Siri know you're not pronouncing my name right and she will actually give you other audio options to choose from. When adding events to the calendar, you may find it difficult to add exact times since it only allows you to do it by five. But if you double tap on the wheel, it will actually let you do minutes now. That's a quick, easy way to disable that function. Working on producing some content, but you also want to have the most accurate color accuracy, disable true tone. You can quickly do this by bringing down the control center, then hold on the little brightness meter. Right here, we got the true tone to be enabled or disabled, as well as night shift mode. You can enable it or disable it all right here. Make Siri read all your texts out loud by simply highlighting them and tap the little tap speak option right here. Great journalism that educates, entertains, and impacts our lives. If you wish to enable this, simply go back to your settings. In general, tap on accessibility, hit speak, and right here you can actually enable speak selection, or you can actually allow Siri to speak the entire screen. And you may also find other controls right here, like, like reading speed, as well as the different voices you have to select from. Back on the home screen, if you have a lot of apps and you wish to move them all at once, simply hold down one app until they start wiggling, move that app slightly to a side, and now simply select the apps that you wish to move and then put them all in a single folder or move them to an entire different page all at once. Closing apps could be a lot faster if you use multiple fingers all at once. So you can simply slide up like this and you can clear out a bunch of background apps quickly when you're using multiple fingers. Then on the maps, if you actually tap and hold, you can actually do a pinch to zoom transition for a more smoother effect. Then lastly, get yourself a smart cover case. It could be either the official Apple one or a third party one. They all seem to work perfectly fine. This allows the iPad to quickly shut off and save battery life. So guys, that's about it. I know there's lots of us who just got new iPads for either work or school use. And those were some things that I know will definitely help out a lot of us to increase our productivity. So I just wanted to lay out a few tips for you guys, some hidden features that you may have not known about. Hopefully you learned something new or two in this video. And now you are an iPad expert. Thanks again for watching, like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.